Now we'll remove the last few bits that are still attached to this upper case. Let's start with the meters. You can see one, two, three, four screws holding them in place. These are the types of screws. I've got this sort of nipple arrangement on the top. A short, brassish, wide ferrule. Because if we lift these tabs out of place, you can see that the grip that they're going into, although there's a metal lip around it that is plastic mounting posts. If the bulbs go out, you can see it there. So it's a fuse type bulb that fits into two metal clips. The front clear part of this meter is just held on with tape. Won't do any harm to cut one of these open to show you. Get a scalpel, cut along the edge. And that'll open up like that. So these are pretty hard to get hold of, these bulbs. But assuming you have a spare, it just pops out like that. Press the new one in, like so. Slide it in from the front. Yeah. For the sake of the person who this belongs to, I'll replace that cello tape. But in fact, once that's pushed back in by these metal brackets, like so, that tension would hold the two parts of this plastic casing of the VU together. Have a quick look at this cover that goes over the magnetic heads and the pinch roller. If you're going to be removing the transport from the back, which is what I suggest, then this isn't strictly necessary. I tend to remove this just for the point of view of cleaning though, because quite a bit of dirt and grime gets trapped underneath. I believe the type of um, screwdriver, specialist screwdriver you need is a claw hammer screwdriver. I don't have one. Um, what I've been using to get these off is just a pair of pliers. Not, I don't mean pliers, I keep on saying that, tweezers. So I get the two tips, put them in there, left to loosen, right to tight. So once that's loose enough, you can just put one of those in, give it a spin around until there's an un enough of it protruding that you can just turn it by hand. Like so. Same thing this side. So you can see quite a lot of grime catches in there. And then the last thing that we can remove from the upper case is the door. So imagining you had a broken door on here and uh, you managed to obtain a replacement one. This design, there's springs on both sides. Two screws on each of these little clips. Here's how those screws looked removed. Smallish. Wide ferrule again because it's plastic mounting posts. And then if you release the door underneath you'll see that the pins on the two sides come out like that and they've both got this spring on it. Somebody complained to me recently that they couldn't see how the spring went on. You can see that there's like a U shape if you like, squared U shape on one end and then like a little L shape at the other. The L shape is always pointing up the way. Up against the case, here you can see there's tabs either side where that's meant to sit. So, hang on, if I just remove the door altogether for a moment, it should go on like that. So, your clip will go through the spring that way and into the hole on your hinge arm of your door. And then you would screw that tight and then once that's screwed in tight, the square bit is lifted up and it wraps around the arm there. And that's what creates the tension that way. And looking at the chassis, how we would go about removing any parts that are still remaining attached to that, I've kind of marked up what the different screws are using different colours of Sharpie pen. Generally speaking, for bits of metal like this that you're not going to see when the unit's reassembled, that's pretty safe to do this. You can just wipe this off with isopropyl. So those two screws there are for detaching the tape cue PCB. I will be removing that to get in here and clean it properly. Um, same goes for the pitch control, which is attached to the bottom most of these two control PCBs. So these are the ones that have got like a bunch of um, logic chips. I think there's some proprietary chips in there. We'll have a look at that. I won't bother to remove this memory stop button. This screw and this screw pertain to 
this mechanical door release. So basically that catches the door to stop the strength of the two springs from opening it. You press that, that releases the door and up it pops. I won't remove the power switch, but if you needed to take that off, that's where you'd access the screws. You can see that a lot of this, it's front mounted screws, meaning you do have to take the upper plastic case off in order to access it, which from a service person's point of view isn't great on the 244, which is the immediate successor of this, and they moved all of this stuff, so the screws are screwed in from that side rather than from this side, which means that most of this stuff um, can be removed from the back without taking the front plastic case off. Okay, so I've removed those two screws. That gives me access to this tape cue board. I could remove these um, nuts, but not really necessary. I can adequately clean and lubricate these four potentiometers without removing that plate. And then these three have given me enough access that I can lubricate this pitch control. And um, I was saying, oh yeah, it'll, it'll be proprietary chips in here, but no, it seems to be Motorola and um, Mitsubishi integrated chips. I haven't seen the record amplifiers, playback amplifiers, mixers or anything like that become transferred over into larger chips in quite the same way, but the control, the logic, you know, rehearsal facilities, memory, all that kind of stuff like you see in like 424 Mark III, there's going to be like a big chip that does all of that. The user says that it's all working, so I'm not going to fiddle about with the electronics too much. Um, only other possibly useful thing to notice is, um, later on we'll take this off and give this a clean. So if you want to detach that completely, it would appear that this longest KK Molex header is the one that attaches to the um, shuttle controls here. So in fact I'll just uh, pry in there with a flathead screwdriver just now, can detach that. String that wire through there, then that comes away. It's going to make it a bit easier to clean these switches. Quite often, these go get clogged up with dust. You can see that the uh, plastic buttons just pull off. Now, yeah, to get some contact cleaner. You know, always use contact cleaner with the power off and detached. We're agitating this so that the contact cleaner's in there. If there's any dust in the um, conductive surfaces in there, then we're squishing it up against the contact cleaner and then get your compressed air, or in my case, the camp bed pump. And then uh, it will just evaporate. There's no need to follow up with a lubricant and a push-push um, switch like that. 